my understanding that uh, I think I did have part of this recorded, but it was such a short video that all the information wasn't on there. So this is approximately where we left off with last time that you have information for, correct? Or do we need to back up one? Back up one. To this guy here? Okay. One of the things to think about is when we say cephalopods, who are we referring to with that? Well, it's your squids, nautiloids, or nautilus, and your, your octopods. Okay? And that's something that you're going to see that we know all mollusks have a shell. Some are on the inside, some are on the outside. And when you cut this squid open, you will notice that, yes, that pen is the type of shell that these animals have on the inside. And we talked about this before, the idea of this funnel. And what that does is it, as that water is inside the mantle cavity, that mantle flexes, contracts, whatever way you want to look at it, pushes that water out the funnel and allows that animal to have this type of jet propulsion moving one direction or, or the other. So here you're going to see some of the differences between these uh, uh, a squid, nautilus, and, and octopods. There's no rhyme or reason on why they have so many here. Nature had selected them to have that many. My guess would be that when you look at these animals or the nautilus, that they're so heavy that even though they have those gas chambers, they would have to have that many uh, appendages to, to grab their, their prey item. Okay? And with that, that same amount of weight that they would have, they're going to have two pairs of gills in their mantle as opposed to one when you look at members of the same, same class. Because remember, it's the phylum mollusca, but the class cephalopoda. So when you look at these cephalopods, they're going to differ in the number of gills that they have and the number of appendages, and also with that of where the shell is located. And we, I epically failed trying to draw that shell of a nautilus up on the board yesterday. It just looks like a, a, a big, uh, I don't want to say shoehorn, but almost like a big seashell that goes in a loop and inside that loop you have all those gas chambers that will affect this animal's buoyancy. Okay, so we got one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we're almost done. Okay, so again, here what we see, both of these animals are going to have these eight arms but the squids will differentiate themselves by having ten arms because two of them have what we consider it being uh, uh, tentacles using for uh, as, a, as a prey or a food gathering. Uh, uh.
anything that deals with color, okay, these are your different types of uh, uh, cells then that produce these colors. And that was very evident in that of the cuttlefish, that, as they said, a, a, a mastery of disguise is what you could call uh, these, these animals, just because of having these types of cells inside their skin. Mainly the colors, what was it? Green, red, and, and blue, which, again, I don't know if those are the primary colors on the color wheel. <laughs> it would make sense if if they were. Excuse me. And I believe that they had illustrated produced by expanding and contracting. Well, contracting, expanding of what the skin, and when that opens up, that's when you see those different types of pigments being shown. And that would come with type of instinct, how these animals would control uh, what it is that uh, they're trying to change color in or change color to. So definitely, if that's success, that's why it's repeated so much throughout the, the phylum. Then. Or excuse me, not the phylum, but the, but the class. So again, as you can see, we're getting closer. One, two, three. Okay. And that last one, I don't think you have to uh, write anything down for. And again, this is unique to this class, this ink production. Okay. And that's probably a last ditch effect. And in that video, if you remember, what was one of the major predators of these cuttlefish, if you can remember that? A couple days ago, a couple, three days ago. Dolphins, that's right. Okay, so again, a last ditch effect would be these animals getting rid of or dumping that ink out through the rectum and into the water and then using that as, you could say, a smoke screen or anything to that would aid them in getting away. Finally, the last slide that you have to write anything, I believe. Just like what we said, a getaway mechanism uh, for these animals. And without a doubt, that's probably axiomatic, just the idea that cephalopods are very predacious. And that's one of the things you're going to see from here on out, just the idea of any animal we talk about is going to be a, a very predacious animal. We get arthropods, and then once we're done with the arthropods, that's probably the rest of the semester. Then we get on to the vertebrates next semester.
Okay, so as we wind down this week, vocab quiz tomorrow, okay? We'll review and then review again on Thursday, and then part one of your exam will be on that of Friday. All right. Okay, so that does it for, for this chapter, so we will catch up to you next time.